All right, it's time to talk about Jaime Jaquez Jr., who is the rookie for the Miami Heat. Jaime Jaquez has become, so far at least in my opinion, the most reliable rookie from the 2023 draft class. And notice how I said the 2023 draft class because this rookie of the year race and all that stuff, the rookies, technically Chet Holmgren for the Oklahoma City Thunder is a rookie, so I don't want thunder fans all up in my comments and stuff like that chet holmgren's the front runner for rookie of the year but i wanted to talk about jaime Hawkes because in relation to the miami heat the heat are kind of doing it again now i know they struggled a little bit the last few weeks there have been some injuries bam missed a few games jimmy missed a few games as well but the heat haven't been as crisp since their seven game winning streak i believe it was earlier in november tyler hero has also been out for quite a bit with that ankle injury but if you're just talking about the aggregate of things the miami heat they're still going to be right in the mix right in the end at the end of the season and probably poised to make a deep playoff run despite losing gabe vincent despite losing max Struess, i learned my lesson with the heat the previous two years i did not believe in the heat and i was proven thoroughly wrong as long as you have jimmy butler bam Adebayo, and eric spolstra leading your team you always have a shot and another reason they always have a shot is because they know how to find undrafted guys and they also drafted a player that is Miami Heat incarnate and I'm sure that annoys a lot of people who probably hate on the Heat culture moniker. So let's talk about Jaime Hawkes Jr. who I think has been the most reliable rookie in the NBA. So when the season first started, Jaime Hawkes Jr. was getting playing time. He was averaging about 18 minutes a game, but the numbers were about what you expect for a rookie. It was around six and a half points per game. He was shooting 50% from the field, but his usage wasn't that high, and he was averaging just three rebounds and almost two assists per game. But there were clearly some things he could do offensively that fit with what the Heat like to do, which you know is moving the ball, cutting, being a hub, running off of Bam Adebayo, or backdooring for Bam Adebayo, operating well off of Jimmy Butler. And one of the things that was apparent to me watching Jaime Hawkins Jr. is that this dude's feel, and just in terms of passing, was really good, was really advanced for a rookie. Now, of course, that helps that he played four full seasons at UCLA, so he was already a little bit more mature than the average rookie that was coming into the 2023 draft. And just knowing how to play the right way, which is a cliche, but I mean, when you go to UCLA, there's nothing more true than that. Defend just in terms of being in the right place at the right time tough as hell and the dude is big 6'6 225 but it was the connective passing and then once the heat realized hey this guy is showing some more flashes way earlier than what we previously thought he started to get more playing time it was right around that four game road trip in november starting out in memphis where he only played 21 minutes but he did have a solid game he had 11 points and two assists and three rebounds and ever since then Jaime Jaquez has been one of the Heat's heavy minutes guys, or I, I don't know if 32 minutes a game, which is crazy for a rookie by the way, would qualify as heavy minutes for the Heat, but he's been one of the Heat's big rotation guys. And since then, in the last 13 games, especially after the victory against Toronto tonight, Jaime Jaquez Jr. has been averaging 32 minutes a game compared to the first eight games of the season when he averaged 18.6. And during these last 14 games, that 32.1 minutes per game leads all rookies. And also over that time period, Jaime Jaquez has been averaging 15 and a half points per game, nearly 53% shooting from the field, and over 44% from three on three and a half attempts per game, 4.2 rebounds, and 2.9 assists. And one of the things that I've noticed with the Heat is that they like to use Jaime Jaquez in that mid post area. It was actually, it really struck me how much they trust a rookie to run split actions off of Jaime Jaquez. And the way he can find people is really savvy. 
waiting until a hole opens up so we could pass it to the opposite corner. He's really good, especially in that Knicks game. I remember Jaime Hawkes really did a good job of lofting a few passes over to Jimmy Butler. He realized early that Jimmy Butler is just one of those football type receivers in basketball where you could throw a pass up in the vicinity of his area and he'll go get it. He's also good at whenever he penetrates and he draws extra defenders, he's good at finding, say, Bam Adebayo cutting across the lane for a layup or a dunk. Or he'll get an offensive rebound and he immediately finds the open guy. And during some of the games Jimmy Butler has been absent, the Heat have kind of used Jaime Hawkins as a pick and roll initiator and he's been doing a good job finding guys. And it's not just those passes, his spacing is really good for a rookie and he'll be the connecting pass, you know, someone else like say Kyle Lowry or Bam Adebayo will draw in the defense, kick it out to Jaime Hawkes on the wing, and then he'll immediately pass it off to the corner for an open shot because he knows he's the next swing pass over. He's really good already as a rookie when it comes to passing the basketball and just his feel for it. And I'm not going to lie, in the two games Jimmy Butler missed, the one against Brooklyn and the in-season tournament game against Milwaukee, Jaime Hawkins kind of showed some shot creation chops that makes me rethink his upside a little bit. He had one play where he had a behind the back dribble in the Milwaukee game and faded away in the lane for a nice little midi and it made Jimmy Butler who was mic'd up for the game go damn and when you get your best player to have that reaction that has to be pretty good for your confidence and it makes me think with his size and his feel for the game and the fact that the Heat are really good at developing these type of players and getting the most out of these players. I think there might be something a little more there with Jaime Hawkes just in terms of his offensive upside. Defensively, he's going to make mistakes because he's a rookie, but whenever I watch Heat games, I don't get the sense that Jaime Hawkes is out of position or slow on something or he's getting overmatched on one of his matchups because Again, he's 6'6", and he's 225 pounds. That's pretty good size already for an NBA player. Plus, he's a four-year player, so it's not like he's coming in as one of those skinny rookies and getting pushed around and bullied. I don't know. I really like this rookie. A lot of people are making the joke that Jaime Hawkes is basically the perfect Heat player, just somebody you would put in the lab to create specifically for the Miami Heat. And it's kind of true. He can cut. He knows how to cut off the star players. He knows how to find the movement shooters. He knows how to find cutters himself. He's also good at finding available space when the ball is moving around. He can spot up. He's a pretty good transition player. There's a lot to like about his offensive game. And more and more, it just feels like Eric Spolstra is giving him more responsibility and seeing how much he can handle. And so far, he's been up to the task.